السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام رحمت اللہ is there any connection between Sayyidina Ali علیہ السلام and غزوائی الہند غزوائی الہند Well, it, it, everything has to do with Imam Ali so, so why, why would we single out just one thing? The Allah keep the physicality of Imam Ali as a safeguard, as an amanat for the nation. Um, had he left the nation in the hands of, of ordinary people, they would have lost the faith. that even sainthood is not a drop under the feet of Imam Ali that they, they take their sainthood from the ocean of Imam Ali all, all sainthood must be signed off from Imam Ali That's why when we read Nadi Ali and it's a Ahlul Sunnah, I think you have Imam Ahmad from Pakistan who gave the whole number of times to recite Nadi Ali. So it's, it's a Sunni tradition not a Shia tradition and that the realities of uh, Nadi Ali was uh, in, in that reality because you would, you would repeat these histories and these realities in nasheeds so that people would remember, that remember him, remember his presence And that by keeping his madad, keeping his love that's why we try to teach if you're, if you're a child then love your father, your fathers and your grandfathers because these are the grandfathers that are important for us, not only the physical ones but these spiritual fathers whom their dowry is these knowledges. If you're hearing it you must be related to them. So you can love your physical father and physical grandfather, I don't know how far they'll take you but to love these spiritual beings, their dowry Their inheritance is immense and by keeping their love you keep their company and you be with whom you love. This was the big key that Prophet gave to his nation. Means the only way you can keep these realities or what can we possibly do to keep the presence of Imam Ali Can you buy something or what can you do, think with your mind? No. But Prophet said, you be with whom you love, so why you don't show love? So when people come say, why you wear their name on your heart? Well, that should be self-explanatory. Why do you give food in their name? Why do you make charity? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below. the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. It is based on the family's name, why do you do all of your events and all of the things that you do to show our love, to validate our love, continuously propagate our love so that You be with whom you love. Do you think that it doesn't go noticed when we give food in the name of Fatima Zahra salam? You give one water or one grain of rice. You don't think that Prophet is happy with you? That you used his holy daughter's name to go out and to prove your faith to people? That she's not happy with you? That her holy children are not happy with you? Her beloved husband is not happy, this is a very connected family. So any one of them that you get involved with, you've got the whole chain of their reaction moving. One grain of rice given in the way of Sayyidatina Fatima Tazari salam, you've activated Prophet nazar, this is undoubtedly the most beloved child of his. You've activated Imam al Hassan, Imam al Hussein, you've acted, activated all the daughters no doubt. And you've activated Imam Ali because they all love each other, their family 
and they love the fact that you showed a love and respect. And that's a sign of love and that's the only way this can be achieved that people who are, are going out and they, 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 they send pictures to us, Shaykh, I got this paycheck and I got some pizzas and food and I gave it in the name of Sayyidatina Fatima Tazara. Well that's the best thing you can do, why you want to give it in my name and my family name and my, my uncle's name? No, give it in the name of Sayyidatina Fatima Tazari Salaam to activate the nazar of Prophet to activate all the nazar I described. Give it in the name of holy people, it's the only way that we can show our love for them. And as a result you activated these nazar, you activated an immense power and they stay with you. And a day that you say, I can't find something to eat, God forbid. They remember, they bring you from ways that you, you can't even imagine. They put a video now where a man was trying to shoot a white pigeon. Why? He was a crazy person in the Middle East and the pigeon is standing there, usually birds come as awliya. And for some reason they thought it was funny on the video but he kept firing at this pigeon but nothing was hitting it, the, the bullets were moving. And then they were thinking, oh this is so funny but I would have thought they're kind of crazy that maybe that was a, an awliya that why would they do something like that? When Allah brings a creature and, and, and sort of submits to you and it's not moving from the shots, it's just standing there and they keep walking around they can't hit it. I mean so many signs of Allah's might and majesty everywhere but people don't have eyes to, to see or ears to hear that the, the goodness that Allah surrounds us with and the signs that Allah surrounds us with are immense, immensely powerful. So that to keep the company of good and loving people so that we will be protected. They come then in ways that can't be imagined, they bring water from sources that can't be understood, they bring food from sources that can't be understood. They shelter you from difficulty in ways that you can't imagine just because of your good deed and your love, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa About the battle of heart and the head, how can we seek help if we are always indecisive about decisions in our life? Forgive us please and dress us with your blessings. Yeah, the indecision is the lack of the light of faith. Because imagine that you, if, you, if we understood like electronics, that if the wire was connected, as soon as you made intention there would be a reaction. So you make intention, you provide the action. When the yaqeen is, is strong, that means your wire is connected. Shaitan's role is now to come between these two where you make intention but there won't be any action. So when you can't fulfill an action based on your intention and usually the first khatar is the true one. Every subsequent one has now been digested with your nafs and shaitan and changes it. I feel inspired to give a hundred dollars, think about it, think about it, then shaitan come, no five, you're down to five dollars, thinking that's what I should do. So the first khat that comes should be the strongest and most correct but in your meditation is what's needed so that you have a strong connection. And as your connection is stronger, shaitan has to stay farther away from the person. If the connection is not strong, shaitan actually blocks every connection. So every intention you make, shaitan comes, stops it and the person can't react on it. The intent to pray, azan goes off, shaitan blocks it. They wait, 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 wait to the last minute before the prayer or even miss it. Well who did that? Shaitan blocked it. So that's when we say you have to have a madad, you have to have a, a connection with the shaykhs. And this madad is not achieved scientifically only by this thought process and scientific process but by love. When you say, ah I can't make madad well then you're not a person capable of loving. You, you know how to make madad with your spouse, you know how to make madad with your children, you, you madad with your parents and grandparents means everyone you love. You see them in your heart, you feel them in your heart, you're worried about protecting them, you're worried about their, their sustenance, you're worried about their shelter, well that's madad. 
So when you have a love for the shaykhs and love for Prophet love for Allah Most High, love for Sayyidina Muhammad, love for Holy Companions and Ahlul Bayt and then love for Ulul Am, the shaykhs and the guides, it has to be through the love which then equals the madad and you bring them into your heart and you carry them wherever you go. As a result of that madad it comes with a power so that your connection is strong. You make intention they provide the reaction right away and shaitan has a very difficult time blocking your intention, inshaAllah. And the battles of the last days and Qujwat al-Hind and that will be all under these, these, these tajalis. So this, this is a, a, is a big, big sign of, of a immense support from Imam Ali Salam. And when you hear the rhetoric of these people become more and more aggressive then something dangerous is coming. And Prophet also warned, don't ever wear saffron. For men, don't wear that color. And why? Because it's a color of their belief and the atrocities in which they put upon humanity and the atrocities in which they will put upon humanity. And that Prophet said, if you have it, burn it. Means then it's a symbol of that color and fire of their desire for fire, their love for fire, they even burn their own dead because shaitan plays with them. So these are, are very dangerous, very dangerous times but you can understand from holy hadith the, the extent of the difficulty of the nature of these people. Now you see more and more where people will say, oh this, this guy is so good, this guy is so pious, he talks so pious and then he asked for this child to, to put something on his mouth and disgusting people, disgusting habits and we've given talks on, on that before that you want to know a, a type of people and the goodness of people, don't look to the superficial videos and talks that they have to give to people but look to how they treat their dead, right? This is our temporary abode. This is not our home. So our life, our life is the last chapter. Your last chapter is what? Your janazah. That's when I'm sending you back to Allah. So when you go for janazah is what? It's your departure from this horrible abode to go back to paradise if that's what you were asking for. To go back to your Creator if that was what you were asking for. And to show him that with your body and soul you were good. You didn't harm your body and oppress it and mark it and, and abuse it like returning a, a rental agency. Allah rented you that body, gave it to you in trust. You actually have to return it and show that I have no blemishes, I put nothing upon this other than what you gave to me and I kept it to be clean. And then more important Allah wants then now the condition of your soul. So death is the most important aspect of our faith. All our actions, all our prayer, all our zakat, all our Ramadan comes to what event? The buying of your home? No, all of those events came to your last breath. Because they're the ones who will be accompanying you into the grave your actions. So when you wash the person, beautify and perfume the person, wrap them and put them into the grave within a day and no, no longer, why? Because you're sending off to the Lord Almighty this beautific soul and beautific fragrances and making everything to be perfect according to the will of God. So. Watch what a people do to themselves for death and that will give you the entire reading and understanding of their book. Because the book on the cover may have many lies because here you know they put these elephants and creatures and they say, oh these are such good people they don't want to harm an, a, a worm. A worm, they rip their dead to pieces and put them on the side of mountain for birds to eat. That a normal human could never touch their, their loved ones. 
they shred the meat of their loved ones and put them on sides of mountains for birds to eat. Only in the end we said, there will be no more grey, not coming very much black and white. So people who thought these things in the middle were nice, these are nice people, no, no, this is a filthiness that Prophet warned us. And there will be no more grey, it will be black and it will be white, those that represent the heavens and those that represent Jahannam, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as salam uh, If we've decided to do ittikaf in these last 10 days, is there any specific zikrs or instructions? It's all posted on Facebook see. Anyone wanting to do itikaf, there's a whole instruction and adab of itikaf that follow us on Facebook. Everything and all awrads and zikrs are being uh, propagated on Facebook. So follow the shaykh on Facebook and everything they post is ahead of time before the, even the time of itikaf begins and it's on our emailing list. So people don't unsubscribe from email lists, unsubscribe from every store and department store and Starbucks email but don't unsubscribe from an email from the shaykh's list. You like it, you don't like it, it aggravates you because you don't want to give, that's your problem. But don't unsubscribe, that spiritually is showing something that you're given an opportunity and others haven't been given an opportunity. Don't let your nafs come in and, and make a, a bold gesture like that. So it has many different ramifications and signs for oneself. So subscribe to the email list, watch the feeds on Facebook, say, I'm not on Facebook, you don't have to be on Facebook. Make a Facebook account called SMC uh, Meditation, never under your personal name. We're not encouraging people to make personal profiles and uh, socialize and direct message people which haram. So we're asking people to make the account profiles under organizations, Muhammadan way, Muhammadan reality, Sufi meditation, all these beatific things because they are themselves a dawah, take and propagate, take the feeds, take the post and resend them out to other people. You don't know if one person you touch then Allah inspires that person to read and say, oh my gosh this is new. So we have people coming new. In, in droves that come and they saw it somewhere, they saw a video somewhere, they clicked and now they're watching and it's very unique teachings. It's not like two or three people doing the same. This style of teaching and these realities, they're not available. They're not definitely and not in the East and it's not available in the West. So it's a unique station, unique realities for unique souls that have a, a, a yearning and an understanding, inshaAllah. We got an email, very interesting, I don't want to give a, a name from somebody but had family problems and some sort of an energy effect in the family between the, the spouses and the children. And they said that we got the taweezes, we, we got many du'as, we got all, all these different things over time and a little bit working here then a little bit going back and a little bit this and a little bit that until we received the asa. They had ordered the, an asa and the asa came and as a result he said of the asa, as soon as I took it into the house, this person that was having difficulty immediately began to cry and said it was just something that they couldn't understand and that they understood that this must be the support of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq that came into their home and immediately took away the magic of one of these individuals of the household that was hitting them and they began to cry and cry and cry and they were astonished, the family was astonished and uh, it, it was a pretty amazing email that came in. And our, our opinion on that is always that, you know, love is rewarded. When you hear the teachings and you believe in the understanding then Allah works in mysterious ways. 
So alhamdulillah that the, the sunnah and the power of the sunnah is unmatched and whether Allah uses it at that moment for the servant and the need of the family then alhamdulillah that's up to Allah But a day will come when people will see that their asa are like dragons because the heavens have dragons that support them from Sayyidina Malik. They see that their rings are supported by Imam Ali with a qudra and a might. If the ring of Sayyidina Sulaiman brought a power for the people of Bani Israel, eh, imagine the, the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad when activated for Ummat al Muhammad and the, the nation that most favoured by Allah the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad that what type of izzat and might Allah will release just to show His favour and love that people will be astonished that how the Creator of the heavens has so much love for this Prophet Muhammad that look his sunnah what type of power it has, inshaAllah. So this, those were very beautiful emails that came in and it was very uh, amazing, amazing stories, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Can you please if you can expand some more about Sayyidina Musa Salam being empowered with the souls of those who were killed by Firaun in regards to Sayyidina Mahdi Alayhi Salaam You know that ever since we opened that subject now they came back and said there's 70,000 black prophets you never heard this before, not even from Muslim ulama that they kept showing and pretending that all the Prophets were white. But since they opened this key, this knowledge came onto the earth for people to go back and check their history. They say there are as many as 70,000 Prophets of Allah dark skinned and that don't believe the history that you've seen on television and written in books that are of a pro-white understanding, they make everything painted, what you call whitewashed. They take every colour and paint it as if everybody from heavens were Vikings, no offence to the Viking people but that wasn't the reality. Now SubhanAllah all these ulama are now posting this, this Prophet was black, uh, Sayyidina Sulaiman Sayyidina Dawood their history was a dark skin color, Bilgis and Shiba were all uh, Eritrean and Ethiopian nations. So these were very black uh, race of people, dark skin color. But it means these, these haqqaiqs and last days is what we're telling you about uh, black and white. When we get closer to the end the truth will come out. Whatever they buried of lies Allah brings it all back up. Because they, there's a creator, you know you can lie as much as you want but when the game is over their time is over, their lies are over. So the truth has to come out and the reality has to come out and the immensity of, of these realities. Now they're beginning to re-bring out the power of energy and qudra. So I don't know if people are watching the same things I'm watching, they understood now copper brings the energy within the atmosphere and that they put copper in their gardens. And as soon as they put copper in the gardens the natural energy in the ether and the energy in the air actually begins to activate the soil and all the fruits and everything grows big. Then they went back and said, 1940s the government told these farmers, stop doing that. You're producing so much crops the price of your crops will drop. So then everything became small so that they could sell more. So this was about their economics and not about energy, not about healing. When people and the people go back to Allah's healing they'll understand the energy is already in the air. How do you capture it? How do you bring it? How do you sort of energize oneself from what Allah has already given to us in their ether and in the atmosphere? So. These are you know haqqaiqs and truths that will come out. As far as Nabi Musa is that the equation in spiritual energy has to always be equal. 
So when a, an oppressor waiting for a heavenly event thinks that they can oppress a people and delay the event, they actually are increasing the charge of positive energy. So God forbid a hundred people by an oppressor is killed, that's one hundred negative that's thrown upon that oppressor, the charge of one hundred negative. But what happens to the good from that is that those people were oppressed. The positive of their reality that Allah gave to them, they give the allegiance of their positive to that saviour of that time. So as Pharaoh was killing, he was increasing his sins and darkening his soul, taking away the energy of his, his nation because he was depleting it like a, like, a, like a dead vampire, there was nothing left. But at the same time he was energizing Sayyidina Musa because each of those whom became shaheed they were innocent and youth. What happened? Like Churubin they gave their soul and allegiance to Sayyidina Musa he became their energy, he became the culmination of all their beings, their madad and love upon him, he became very powerful. So nothing is wasted in Allah's way, the equation must always be equal. So when somebody is oppressing then the positive side must be gaining immense positive on their scale. That's why we said last days then they go around and they kill a hundred thousand people and their nations fall into sin. Look they went and killed how many millions of people in these deserts and now their nations are disoriented thinking they're women, thinking they're, they're cows and sheep, they're completely sort of confused nation in darkness but that positive energy went to very powerful awliya and uh, that energy is sort of emanating and that's why we said in the last days people can come to reality in a day because of the amount of excess energies that are coming Allah will give for a few to represent many. So it's not going wasted. You know they kill hundred thousand, hundred thousand have taken allegiance but they're the power of a thousand men. Those hundred thousand are now multiplied by a thousand so the immensity of what Fulqul Mashhoon when Allah is saying they're loaded ships is now becoming on earth powers that can't imagine. So the, the shaykhs in those region are you know giving bayat initiation and becoming more and more powerful. At least hundred thousand died in Turkey. Do you think they were gone and vanished or no? They became shaheed and the people whom plotted that and sent the energy to make that happen, the people whom built like that uh, defunct and defective, they got the azab. But the positive went to the shaykhs of that region to prepare for the arrival of Imam Mahdi His trust will be there, the battles will be there, Bani Asrar will be entering into that region and the whole region will be under extreme warfare. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Regarding Salatul Kafara Az Zunub, will we be reciting that this Thursday or the next Thursday? The last Thursday of Ramadan. Is this Thursday last Thursday? No. No? Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Yeah, next Thursday only 29th. Yeah, last Friday. Last Thursday night which will be the Friday, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Regarding the color of saffron, yes. what, what about saffron beards? Is it prohibited as, as well? Saffron who? Beards. Well you've heard my talks on those.
I think we're supposed to stay away from that color because of what it symbolizes and the extent of the, the, the magic that they do and the negativity and the hatred that they have. Not our hatred, they have an immense hatred and because they're idolatry they have uh, no, no empathy within the heart because Allah's not there. When Allah's not in the heart the empathy and compassion is not there. When someone enters into idolatry they talk like, oh they're so peaceful but when Allah's not there there's no empathy in the heart, shaitan is there. So shaitan is never peaceful. It's only a matter of time when he really shows himself. So you would see all these, these, these people of that saffron color they were doing crazy things and beating people and extorting people and say, so, oh I didn't know that these people do like that. No they do because if you're devoid of Allah devoid of Divine Grace well then you have satanic energy. It's just a matter before shaitan shows himself and shaitan talks with a snake's tongue, he talks nice. So that to bring people to shapes of animals and elephants and twelve-handed women and because he talks nice to people with the tongue of a snake. But in reality when his evilness comes out it's too late for the people whom are trapped under that difficulty. So and as far as the, the sunnah is concerned then the sunnah of that time was a black henna. I guess they started to use different color hennas because it was convenient and they said, well henna is henna but no henna is not henna because this, the concept of henna and the hikmah of henna was for warfare. Because when Prophet was going to war and the companions were getting a bit older in age and wiser, the look of all white bearded sahabi may not have been very intimidating and part of war is psychological. So the hikmah of, of henna was not a fashion statement but was for battle that to make the companions who were older to look younger. So when people would look that who's going to be fighting they all look mashaAllah young men. So the concept of henna and the hikmah of henna was for warfare and to show the, the might of the nation as being ready to fight although they were extremely powerful but the warfare was psychological that let the opponents have a fear in their heart that when they're approaching, they're approaching all these black bearded very huge statured men. But somehow it morphed again because shaitan plays with people to, to become they look like the trolls now. Where they have these orange beards and, and dark skins and what, what that doesn't look fearful at all, it looks like quite frightening. So again the taking a sunnah and not applying it in the proper way and in the, the proper fashion in, in the hikmah in which it was used for. It was used to, to show the might of a nation so that you would have a, a fiercity against your opponent. So now people look and say, what are, can you imagine like in battle that you, your whole front line are all orange bearded men with dark skin and they're all you know glowing, it was like those troll dolls that have the, the colors. I don't think that was the proper use of the sunnah, Allah knows best if they prefer to use that color but its reality was black so that they looked young for warfare, inshaAllah. InshaAllah subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzat amin yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen illa sharif al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ashabihi kiram wa dhamma shaykhina fi tariqatina shbadiyyata al aliyya wa sa'ayna wa sadatina wa siddiqina al fatiha. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Najran, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs. Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. 
Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.